everybody. I'm Kenny Schillinger. I want to welcome in Senator Jake Corman. We're here to talk about the PIAA and Penn State uh, athletics as well uh, amid everything that's going on with COVID-19. So let's start out with the P PIAA, Senator, and uh, all the news that's kind of been swirling around the last couple of weeks with the PIAA and, and their decision to move forward with some pushback from the governor. I just want to get your, your opening thoughts about um, all of that going on right now. The PIAA uh, spent the summer uh, working on uh, plans, procedures, um, and, and trying to put processes in place so that uh, we could have uh, high school athletics uh, this fall. And they did a great deal of work, uh, and I think they've gotten to a point where they feel comfortable. Unfortunately, a couple of weeks ago, uh, out of the blue, in a sort of offhanded comment, uh, the governor said he didn't believe it was his recommendation that there be no sports until January 1st. And this is an unfortunate pattern uh, from our governor. Uh, his attitude is we can't, uh, where other people's attitude is we can if we try hard and we work hard and we plan. Um, you know, it, it is, this is not just an athletic event. Uh, it's not just a football game or a cross country meet or things of that nature. Uh, there was an article in the Inquirer recently that talked about 75% of young adults have had you know, depressionary thoughts, depressionary problems since COVID uh, has been uh, in place since March. Uh, and so it's important for, for these type of events, for kids to get out, for, for them to still want to go to school uh, and do well. Uh, opportunity maybe to increase their education through higher education opportunities through athletics. And so uh, this is far more than just a, an event, a game, a cross country meet or a golf match or whatever. Uh, it's a way of life and it's a way of life is important for young people. So we are hopeful uh, there'll be a rally at the Capitol this week and we are hopeful the PIAA will vote on um, uh, this week uh, to go ahead with fall sports. And look, do I believe that there'll be some spread of, of COVID-19? Absolutely. Um, anytime we're out and about amongst each other, there's gonna be some spread. Uh, the question is, are, are people going to the hospital? People um, uh, putting wear on our, on our, our healthcare facilities? Uh, are people dying? Are people going on ventilators? And, and if that's not the case, because in most young people, uh, if they do get COVID-19, it just, a, they're barely symptomatic, uh, and B, you know, like getting the flu, you get sick for a while and you get better. Uh, and I think that's what we have to focus on, um, you know, what is the impact if there is some spread? And hopefully there won't be, and we'll do everything we can to stop it. Uh, but I don't think we have to be in a panic just because a few cases arise either. Do you think the governor's decision to, to make that the stay uh, of um, a recommendation and, and not have plans to make that a mandate uh, could change if maybe there's outbreaks because Penn State students come back to the school or just any other reason that there could be an outbreak in, in the following weeks? Look, I mean, it's certainly a possibility. Uh, you know, the, the recommendation was a welcome change from this governor. Normally he, he does things through executive orders and mandates. Uh, this one he's let stand as a recommendation. Um, you know, he's made some orders uh, with further mitigation recently that, that he, he himself has admitted doesn't have any uh, data to back it up. And so I would certainly hope if we get started uh, down this road of athletics in the fall, uh, that even if they're spread in some counties, uh, again, take all the factors in that I mentioned earlier, uh, but also uh, are they, you know, is there a factor of participating in sports? Look, we've been having sports all summer long. Uh, they're just travel sports. Um, and, you know, my son participates in a travel baseball team. There's really no evidence that there's spread because of, um, of these type of athletics all summer long. And um, the problem is, you know, travel teams cost money. And so not everyone can afford to do that. Where high school athletics, for the most part, do not cost money. Uh, and so people of all sorts of, on the ladder of economic scale um, can participate. So it's important that we move forward with this. And uh, hopefully the governor won't change his mind and, and make it an executive order and a mandate to stop it. Uh, I suspect that he won't, at least for now. You've kind of seen uh, some surrounding states plan to move forward as well. Um, just, back, just this week with Ohio and New Jersey, uh, vice versa. Could you see, I, I know it could be let down or could be up to the local level. Um, the PIAA could leave it up to the local level for them to compete in sports. Could you see uh, if more districts and I mean, more areas? I'm saying ultimately, this is where this decision lies. Uh, it lies with parents. Uh, parents are going to take, as myself, as being one, uh, my wife and I are going to sit down and look at all the, uh, you know, the processes that are put in place for, for our children's safety. Um, 
know, weigh the risk. You know, life's a risk. Every time we get out of bed and go outside, uh, we have a risk. Uh, and so we have to weigh that. And, uh, you know, so ultimately, you know, athletics is a volunteer sport. Uh, I'm sure schools will have waivers for, for kids to participate, which is certainly understandable. Um, and uh, we will ultimately make that decision. So I don't think there's a need for the governor to come in and stop this. Um, I think it's uh, ultimately a local decision. Uh, the PIWA is allowing it to go forward, hopefully. We'll find out later this week. And then, you know, school districts can opt out if they want to. School districts don't have to participate if they don't want to. So um, ultimately, it is a parent and child decision. Transitioning into the Penn State and the Big Ten talk here, uh, with, with Penn State not having any fall sports, uh, what does that mean? You're a Penn Stater and you also are very familiar with the area growing up here. Yeah. What would that mean to the state college area, central Pennsylvania area, and even this, at the statewide level? for them or what's it going to mean for them to not be playing and not have any fall sports, especially football? It's devastating. Uh, it's devastating from a lot of different perspectives, clearly devastating from an economic perspective of, you know, you, you can't have a hundred thousand people come into our community seven times uh, a, a fall, seven weekends of fall and not have a significant economic drop off. Not to mention all the other, you know, Penn state has about 24 different uh, teams, uh, varsity sports, maybe even more than that. And, um, you know, all those teams host games. And so the Big Ten teams come in or other travel teams come in and they play and they stay here for the weekend. So it is a, just a devastating economic impact uh, to this community for not only the hotel industry, but all around the tourism industry, restaurants, you, you know, uh, stores that sell clothing, things of that nature. You know, you, you name it, it's going to have an impact. Um, and then it also has an emotional impact, as I mentioned before. And we're, we're going to go through probably three of the worst months of our lives in political rhetoric uh, with this uh, political campaign coming in November. And, you know, these type of activities, college sports, high school sports, whatever, are, are a great diversion, are a great way for us to be united as opposed to divided. Um, you, know, you can't go on TV nowadays without looking at news networks trying to divide it. Um, and, you know, athletics can unite people who have from different perspectives. Um, it's a nice diversion. So emotionally, it's going to have a dramatic impact as well. So, you know, we're going to have to do our best, uh, but it certainly was a, um, you know, a punch to the gut when we heard that the Big Ten was not going to have sports this fall. What can people in the community do to, to help kind of uh, battle the decision from the Big Ten to kind of help out the community? What, what can they, they do, people in the community? With, well, with I mean, the, I don't know what they can do as far as battle the Big Ten. The Big Ten's going to make a decision, and I don't know that we have a lot of impact. I, uh, well, I, I, I meant more of helping out the community with, with sure. without having the fall sports. Well, really, I mean, ever since um, um, COVID began back in March, and, and particularly the restaurant industry, which is really uh, taking a beating, and, and the governor's newest order that reduces 25% has made it even worse. Um, you know, try to try. We 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 tried to. Um, I know my family um, do a lot of takeout as much as we possibly can to support our local establishments so they can survive during this this period of time. Um, you know, just come up with community type of events, uh, whatever they might be, to support whether it be high school, PIA, you know, and uh, do what we can because um, you know we got to get through this and we're going to get through this. Uh, it's these are these issues are you know, just one more layer of, of um, you know, difficult subject matters to discuss and, and to forego. You know, I, I felt so bad for the seniors in high school last year who missed a lot of their activities toward the end. I have a senior child this year, and I, they might miss everything. Um, even if there is football, you know, they're not going to have fans in the stand. So the poor cheerleaders, the band, you know, are going to miss their senior year. Uh, you know, the Raider Nation in Belfont, they call it. And, you know, a bunch of kids get together and watch the games. So uh, all those sort of great activities for young people are gone. And so we got to create new ones. Uh, we got to create what we can. Um, we, you know, we can't be afraid to be outside. We can't be afraid to be near each other. Just take the proper precautions with masks and other things uh, and, and do the best we can. Because, uh, you know, I'm a big believer we're a can-do society. We can figure things out. Uh, we can do things if we're smart. Um, and, you know, too many, too many of the attitudes dealing with the virus has been, we can't, uh, and I think it's time we start focusing on what we can. 
Well, I appreciate your time. Uh, thank you for, for speaking to us today sure. and take care, stay safe. You too. Thanks for the opportunity. Have a great day.